So we will begin this session with Dr. Young, who is speaking on rural, urban, and racial disparities in maternal care access, quality, and outcomes during COVID-19 pandemic in South Carolina. Doctor. Thank you, James. Good morning again. Um, it's really an honor to be the first presenter uh, for the research projects. And, and I want to uh, reiterate our gratitude for the ICPSR's um, co uh, really coordination and organization for this consortium meeting. Uh, it's a really important platform for us to really share our research data and foster collaboration. So today, on behalf of my team, I'm going to share with you all the uh, preliminary data that we have on the rural, urban, and racial disparities in maternal care access, quality, and outcomes. We call it triple M's during the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, this is our team. Uh, we have a lot of uh, expertise from different departments from the University of South Carolina and one colleague from Cornell University in School of Pub uh, School of Medicine. Uh, my P MPI, Dr. Xiaoming Li, is here with us and our colleague, research associate, uh, Dr. Casey Aldohowski also is with us today. So what's the motivation of focusing on the rural, urban, and racial disparities in, in this maternal care triple M's? It's actually driven by the historical disparities facing racial minority populations in terms of maternity care um, throughout the, those, those outcomes. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw persistent and sometimes widening black and white disparities in prenatal postpartum access, as well as maternity care quality, sometimes measured by uh, cesarean deliveries, not necessary cesarean cese deliveries. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the early pandemic, we we had a pilot survey and we uh, reached out to 746 birthing people that were uh, delivering during the early COVID. And higher proportion of African American birthing people actually reported they were recommended by their providers to have to undergo cesarean deliveries or labor inductions, even though they believe they did not have medical indications for those. Um, in the results, we also, in the pilot survey, we also learned that rural hospitals and small hospitals or urban underserved communities are really facing a lot of challenges to fit into all this hospital service sign and provide necessary or high quality obstetric care. And you can see on the right hand side here, CDC recent report also showed that a lot of birthing people, they never had a cesarean deliveries, actually had had the first time cesarean deliveries uh, during the uh, pandemic 20, 2020 and 2021. Another observation we saw is the challenges facing postpartum individuals and families. And during the COVID-19, those postpartum individuals actually seeing this kind of uh, undergo physical, social, and psychosocial challenges while caring for their, and sometimes prioritizing their newborns during the pandemic. So then these two really are focusing on the two set of outcomes we are going to uh, cover today. Um, that's part of our five ongoing uh, papers for M1. And why are we lo looking at the rural urban? Uh, let me hide this one. Can I have this? Yeah. Uh, why are we looking at the rural urban disparities? COVID-19 pandemic actually at the early pandemic, it hits urban communities much harder. But after October, 2020, rural communities face much higher COVID-19 outcomes, including hospitalizations of all the populations in rural communities and COVID-19 mortality. And after that, it has been continuously higher in the rural communities. So in this study, we really wanna, uh, uh, So in this study, we have four specific M's. The first M, we will be, which will be for the focus of today, is to look at the impact 
Rather, the changes in maternal care triple aims access, quality, and outcomes overall before and during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Then we zoom in to see the individual maternal health uptake, what is the, that role might get this kind of pandemic effects, especially with a focus on rural, urban, and racial disparities in all those domains. Then M3, we're looking at the state telehealth policies, how that different kind of restriction waiver would improve this kind of access to telehealth and with, with subsequent uh, impacts on the utilizations and access to high quality maternity care. And for a few of our colleagues who would develop the simulation model um, to really predict the long-term accessibility, quality, and outcomes, along with the childbirth expenditures uh, with without state telehealth policies by mobile mo mo uh, modality. Um, the overall conceptual framework actually start with our hypothesis that we know there were pre-existing disparities to maternal health, if you if you can see my house, yeah. And then overall, we hypothesized that the COVID pandemic will have negative impacts on the maternal health. Then this on average impacts actually may be different and varied by residency and really heavily a uh, kind of challenging the vulnerable populations. Then we also hypothesize access to maternal health during the COVID-19 would have some kind of positive impacts on the maternal health due to the increased access. But this will also have disparities because of a digital divide. Then the variation of state telehealth policy allow us to really look into the variation for those uh, audio only originating size policies that increase the access to maternal health. At, um, telehealth. Then together, hopefully we can see some impacts and what kind of outcomes will be more amenable to state telehealth policies and mental health telehealth uh, uptake. Our date, our result, um, our project actually comes from three different data sets. Um, and each data set have multiple data sources. Uh, the first one is the nationwide N3C EHR data is pro bono EHR data that includes um, all the records for patients visiting about uh, I believe 92 health systems. So only limited to those they had access to healthcare. That's why we are uh, leveraging population-based data from South Carolina and from Florida data. These two states have very different state, uh, telehealth policies that will allow us to observe every single childbirth and birthing people in the states. Um, these are the selected measures from our data. We, inc we focus on pandemic ex exposure, not only pre and peri pandemic, but also never exposed to pandemic during pregnancy partially exposed to pandemic during pregnancy or during postpartum and and fully exposed um, to the pandemic and focus on residency and rurality. We are looking into those behavior factors for our access measures, pre, prenatal care, postpartum care, telehealth uptake, and breastfeeding care. We also have a lot of clinical outcomes that we derived for example, the one that I'm going to show with you, cesarean delivery is among different types of pregnancies. We we relied on the medical coding, including ICD diagnosis, ICD-10 diagnosis or procedure codes, CPD hypixel codes, or CPT modifier codes. Those are mainly for the telehealth uptake and DRG codes for hospitalization. This data also allow us to, to link maternal records to the birth records so that we can have all the birthing people and births occurred in the South Carolina and Florida data. We have also access to provider characteristics based on the N MPI, and then that allow us to uh, control for the specialty and the practice locations. So today, we're really focusing on sharing the preliminary results with you for the for some of the M1 papers. We have five papers, uh, three su submitted, one accepted, and these two are two out of three ongoing 
papers that I would love suggestions and discussions. So first paper I want to show with you is the black, white, rural urban disparities in unnecessary, unnecessary cesarean deliveries in South Carolina before and during COVID-19 pandemic. The second paper, we focus on those that are fully exposed to COVID-19 and then look into postpartum readmissions involving mental illness or substance use, again, in South Carolina. So this is the part that we are focusing on for these two papers. Uh, we don't have time to go through how we got those uh, birthing people, but basically we relied on medical coding to, um, to identify birthing people's records from the hospital, uh, au pair hospital data. And then each, as you can imagine, each birthing outcome, each outcome has different eligibility criteria. So it's kind of conditional on um, their existing uh, clinical conditions. So for example, the one that we're focusing on for maternal care quality, the first one is among those birthing people who never undergo um, cesarean, and they are doing the they are having the first cesarean deliveries. That's a primary cesarean delivery rate. The second one is limited to only those birthing people who who have the first baby full term single attend only one and then vertex, no more position. And all those birthing people, how many of them actually undergo cesarean deliveries? And this is the trend overall for all the South Carolina birthing people. And you can see the NTSV for those low risk cesarean rates is pretty consistent, not really changing uh, much. But primary cesarean deliveries is, is consistent to the CDC report. There is a slightly increasing after January 2021. What about we stratify by residents' rurality and, and their residency? I'm showing you the dots are for the monthly rates, and then we are showing the trend for the six month moving average. You can see here among the urban birthing people, those uh, there's this persistent white and black disparities in the primary cesarean rates, and there was a widening disparities uh, after January 2021. You can see here, but rural birthing people is kind of sensitive to uh, that COVID onset. And after after January 2021, there is a, a rural birthing people's primary cesarean race actually outpaced the rural white birthing peoples. Similar trend was observed in the low risk cesarean deliveries and ESV cesarean deliveries, but there was no really widening disparities uh, in, in this trend, uh, you can still see white, uh, white black disparities in urban, but it's kind of lumped together uh, for the rural birthing people. So that's um, the preliminary data for the cesarean papers. I only have two, uh, two minutes. So I'm gonna share with you some preliminary results for the postpartum remissions after they, they have childbirth discharge. In, here we are, we, we derived two kind of ma majors. One is postpartum readmissions involving any of the mental illness diagnosis. And you can see rural birthing people actually had higher per 1,000 birthing people, higher uh, postpartum readmission rates, and also higher readmission rates for substance misuses. Um, it's okay. By residency, uh, you can also see that Black birthing people have much higher postpartum readmission rates for mental illness as well as for substance use. When we track that over time for one for th 360 days, you can see there's no mm -hmm. uh, differences for rural urban in terms of postpartum readmission rates, but Black individuals actually have higher postpartum readmission rates involving mental illness. That racial disparity is consistent when we look at some use of hospital readmissions. And rural urban was striking, disparities were striking when we focus on substance use involved readmissions. So that's, um, I'm gonna just uh, conclude with the two papers that we summarized here. 
primary and NTSV cesarean rates are really uh, have a persistent disparities and the black and white disparity actually vary by reality of residence. Postpartum readmissions are kind of striking and we saw a persistent uh, disparities for black and white and also rural rural urban disparities in, in terms of re postpartum readmissions involving substance use really warrant some uh, action plans. So future work, we'll continue solving this puzzle and hopefully we can identify some outcomes that will be amenable to telehealth and inform the state telehealth policies as this is our going debate. And that concludes my presentation and welcome any questions you may have later. Thanks.